Can you believe we're here? No. Very nice. It's much different than it looks in pictures. I'm glad we were finally able to get here. I'll show you what we're looking at. Where that water is. It's crazy. It's a whole runner. Okay. Bye bye, Lucy. Constellion named dry tortugas Los Tortugas, which means turtle in Spanish. But it then changed. They changed it to dry tortugas because there was no fresh water. <laughs> Seems silly. That was around Civil War, I believe, when they changed the name. Dr. Mudd helped hide John Milk's booth after the assassination of Lincoln, and because of that, he was sent here, imprisoned, for over four years. After that, he was finally released. But while he was here, yellow fever came. So he actually helped a little bit with the yellow fever and tried to cure it. It's one of the things that I've been joking about is why do you need a moat around a fort that's in the middle of the ocean? And it actually seems like they used the moat way to break up some of the seas which is essentially like the break wall in a marina. So they were ahead of the game, outsmarted me. We haven't really explored any of the water yet anyhow, other than me diving on the anchor. But today is our history day. There's just so many days that we could spend here and I don't think either of us want to rush it because this has been a dream destination for at least five years. Yeah, it's like when we were visiting any of the other national parks. We didn't want to rush our time. But we still did, unfortunately. This time, we're taking it slow. Yep. Then we got this guy. Hard ground. This is definitely a Cuban chug. You can tell by the makeshift. Transom hung rudder. Yeah, it's definitely a Cuban chug. Crazy. Trying to figure out how this chug ended up here. Gulf Stream rips to the east, not to the west. And we're to the west of Havana right now. So that's why we wanted to do the jump off from here so that we can ride the current into Havana, not be fighting the Gulf Stream the entire time. There's no info on this though. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to ask a ranger. So this is the turn the cannons. Cannon Got that track. On track. Then right here, it was on the side. They had like shutters that would, as soon as the shot went off, it would immediately shut to make sure that no, no shots could get in. So these are all the tracks 
we were showing you guys for the cannons. And it runs all the way down there and all the way back there. It's a lot of cannons. That's a lot of swivel. It's a lot of cannons to have never fired one shot. Yeah. Not a single shot has been fired from here. Not yet. Not yet. It's a huge parade ground. This is huge. So this is that round thing that's sticking on the middle of the parade field. I'm trying to figure out what it was. And it stored all the gun ammo powder. So there used to be two floors. And on the other side of this arch, it was all cement. And then second level was wood. And right here, and here, was all wooden floorboards. And it stored barrels of gunpowder that they never used. So they would heat the cannonballs up. They would put the cannonballs down in that side. It would go down. And there was a fire right, right in here. They would heat the cannonballs, load them, and then shoot them at ships to set them ablaze. So they stopped working on the second floor. They just never completed it because they were so concerned about the weight of the whole fort sinking down too much. And that's where we are right now. Second floor. The camera will not show it, but this fort is massive. What we got over here? The moat. I was talking about how no one has tried to escape for good reason. There's nothing around here. And they used to tell them that there was crocodiles, gators, in the moat, in the inside. Which is true. There used to be a saltwater crocodile here up until two years ago? No, like six months ago. Really? It was pretty recently. Yeah, they just got rid of him. So I remember they got rid of him and I was like, just missed him. But yeah. Last, yeah, we've last been year. thinking about this for quite some years and we wanted to get here while the, the crocodile was here, but we set a rule. We wanted to do it on our own boat. Yeah, we wanted to do it on our own terms. We crocodile, croc. yep, he didn't hang out for us. Maybe another one will swim out here. Where's the croc now? We visited him. We did? Yeah. You visited him in St. Augustine? No, we did. On the boat. On the boat? Everglades. Oh. They moved him to the Everglades. Talked about crocodiles in the moat. Apparently they used to keep sharks in here too. That's what they told the prisoners. However, one prisoner, Fat Charlie was his name, he actually brought a 10 foot shark into the moat and it lived for two months. We were just talking about this ferry. Kelsey knows all the stats. How much does it cost? How much time do you spend here? So, you get here at 10 o'clock and you leave by 3, 3 or 4. I don't know what time it is right now. But you come from Key West to here. It's $162 for an adult. And it's a lot of money. And it's like 140 for a kid under the age of six or nine. And then to camp here, it's around 120 bucks. It's a lot of money for a few hours to come here. Really not a long time to check out this fort. And Everything's really... rushed. Yeah. The trip here, the trip spent here. Yeah. The time that you're available to spend here. I can't imagine doing this in 12 to 24 hours. No. There's so much left. Yeah. That's... We've only been here for almost 24 hours now and we've barely scraped the surface. We have a lot to explore still. So there are a few people that work here obviously and they actually have a residence area on the fort, in the fort. That is so cool. And it's facing west so they get kick-ass sunsets every oh, night. Yeah, that'd be cool. And a sweet balcony too.
difference between those. So there's a deep channel that runs right through there and that runs up until Bush Key which is right there and that blocks that deep channel from our anchorage. down a park ranger and asked him some questions on the Cuban chug. So apparently there's no signs there because they had some Cuban nationals visit and they didn't want to offend them or anything so they took down the signs and now the Cuban chug just sits there. He did tell us a couple different stories about some other chugs that have landed. So before Obama lifted the policy of the wet foot dry foot they used to get landings all the time. They said they usually have on average about 650 people try and land here in dry tortugas coming from Cuba. So one of the coolest stories that he told us is right over here on Bush Key. There was a boat that wasn't even a chug, it was a commercial fishing boat. So this guy in Cuba had all the licenses, it was like a real legit boat. It's not jerry-rigged with cans and a V8 motor from some automobile. This guy actually had a real boat. So apparently it was during the day that he pulled in with five other people on board and this was one of the last landings they had. Pulled right in the harbor over here and pulled up while the ferry was pulling up. Reached the boat right over here in Bush Key. Cool thing about that commercial fishing boat is it's still in use in Key West. Closing out another successful day in the Tortugas. Hope you guys liked the tour that we gave today. Gave a little history of this place. It's pretty incredible. I definitely did not know all of this about this location. But for now, dinner time and then off to bed. Good night guys, see you tomorrow. Baby, I'm heading to die, but I'm still gonna try. I guess I'm gonna.